Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe. A lot of you know me from Instagram and Twitter as ZA Reptiles. And today's video is going to be a care guide for corn snakes. So I have with me my corn snake, Phoenix. If you haven't met Phoenix yet, I recommend checking out my Meet My Corn Snake video or introduce you to her, let her know like how I got her, how old she is, just some fun stuff about her. So I'm gonna be hitting similar topics that I hit in my iguana care video. So I'll be talking about heating, lighting, temperatures, general enclosure information, diet, stuff like that. But I do wanna start off with what I always say, I highly recommend you do your own research. Don't just stick to what someone on YouTube tells you. Go on Google, get some books, do your own research. So I wanna start off with just some basic information about corn snakes. So corn snakes, he's actually not moving very much right now, but corn snakes are quite active snakes. They are great for beginners, depending on what you're looking for. A lot of people you'll find if you're searching for what's the be best beginner snake, a lot of people will say corn snakes are ball pythons, but it depends on what you're looking for. Ball pythons are easier to handle, where corn snakes want to constantly be moving and they're a little harder. Because it is daytime, she's and I woke her up, she's a little more mellow, but you can see she's starting to move more now she's waking up. I usually try to handle her during the day because it is easier to handle her with her being such a large snake. Typically, I do need two hands to constantly be going when I'm handling her though. So now that we've gotten handling out of the way, I'm gonna go back to just a general, quick little factual overview of corn snakes. So corn snakes naturally are found in the southeastern United States, but they are found in a lot of states, including Maryland, New Jersey, uh, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, even in Nebraska. They're found in a lot of states. And they're typically found in your more foresty areas and your farm areas. And that leads me into their names. So one of the beliefs of how the corn snake got their name is that English settlers found them in their cornfields and in their corn cribs, and they thought they were actually eating their corn. So they got the name corn snakes and it just kind of stuck. So corn snakes live about 10 years to even late teens. It really depends on the snake and on the care that you provide them with, but they can live up to their late teens. Some even say that they've lived to be 20 or low 20s. So they are by no means a short-lived pet. They are a commitment because you're gonna have it for a very long time. So adult corn snakes are usually about three to five feet in length. Sometimes they even hit six feet. I believe three to four feet is more common. We did decide that Phoenix is about four feet long or four foot long, feet, foot, whatever. You guys get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, they typically hit their full size at about two to three, three to four years, and they're sexually mature at about 18 to 24 months. So about two to three years is when they're hitting their adulthood. Phoenix is about three and a half now, so she has hit her adult stage. This is about as big as she's going to get. And she is a very, very manageable snake, very good size. And she was my first snake. So corn snakes, recommend. So now getting more into the care aspects, I'm going to start with diet. And corn snakes, like most of your snakes, eat mice. You can feed them live mice, frozen thawed, whatever your personal preference is. I personally like to feed frozen thawed, but your babies easily start off with stinkies, and as they grow, they can move up the prey scale. Phoenix currently takes a medium adult. She was on a small adult. She's also on a diet because she was massively overweight. Um, after a while, a small adult didn't seem like enough for her, so now she's up to a medium adult, which seems pretty good. My arm is getting really tired. All right, so now we're gonna talk about temperatures. So for your temperatures, you really want your ambient to be like 78 to 82. So high 70s to low 80s is a really good temperature for them during the day. Your basking spot, you want high 80s. So around 88 is really good. For your cold temperatures, 
mid 70s 75 is usually good for your cool side at nighttime their temperatures can drop down to as low as 68 although i do not recommend that mid to low 70s is usually good for nighttime and you can accomplish this by creating a heat gradient which leads me into heating and lighting sources so for heating what i personally use and what a lot of people use for their snakes are heat mats so if you're using a heat mat you need to have it connected to a thermostat the thermostat will control the temperature of the heat mat it has a little probe so the probe goes inside the enclosure and when the heat mat gets to the temperature that you have it set for the thermostat will turn the heat mat off this prevents the heat mat from overheating and burning your snakes or any of your animals if you ever use a heat mat you should really use a thermostat so i will in the description below put a link to the heat mat and thermostats that I use personally and have good luck with. I've never had a problem with any of mine. So I will link those below so you can go and check them out if you need them. For heat mats, personally, I like mine to cover a third of the bottom of the enclosure. You'll see different things online. Some people say half, some people say a third, some people say a fourth. I personally go for a third. You can also use bulbs or lighting on top. They are crepuscular, which means that they are most active during dawn and dusk, although they are active during the night. Their prime time for activity is dawn and dusk. So what some people use for heat if you're doing overhead heating are ceramic heat emitters because you can use them at night, they don't give off heat. Uh, you can also use if your nighttime temperatures are fine and you just need extra heat during the day to increase the daytime temps and basking. People use your daylights. Although not necessary, having daylights can help with their biorhythms because it will help them know when it is daytime and when it is nighttime. If you're in an area where you're not getting natural sunlight or if your hours are drastically changing. I did use overhead heating with her. I did a couple different bulbs. I've used ceramic heat emitters. I've used nighttime bulbs, um, not the red ones. I don't use red bulbs with any of my animals. There are arguments for both lights and for heat mats. For heat mats, they argue that having underbelly heat aids in digestion, where overhead heat is more natural because in the wild they are getting heat from the sun. So again, it's really up to your personal preference, but for me, I prefer to use heat mats with my snakes. UVB is not necessary because they are crepuscular. However, some people have used UVB with their corn snakes and have seen a positive change in their behaviors. So again, that is another thing that's kind of up to your judgment. I personally don't use UVB with my snakes, but it is something that I'd like to look into in the future. So now talking about humidity, corn snakes should really have 40 to 50% humidity. Some sources will say 40 to 60%. You may think that because they're from, you know, warmer climates, farms. You might be thinking humidity really isn't that important for them, but it actually is because it helps them with their respiratory health and with shedding. So you wanna make sure that those humidity levels are where they need to be. This can be accomplished by using a large water dish that usually does the trick, or also providing a humid hide. This is as easy as getting a Tupperware cutting holes and putting some moss in like sphagnum moss. I just did this, especially around shedding time, I just did this for my sand boa tootsie and she had a perfect shed. And now for the moment you guys have probably been waiting for, this is kind of the fun part, the enclosure. So reptiles, one of the common myths that I have heard is that they will only grow to the size of the enclosure you put them in. And that could not be more wrong. They will grow regardless of the enclosure you put them in, but if they're in an enclosure that's too small, it may just be detrimental to their health. They'll still grow, but they won't be healthy. So it's very important that you provide your corn snakes with the proper size enclosure. Babies do really well in something like a 10 gallon. Juveniles can be in a 20 gallon. And when I say 20 gallon, I mean a 20 gallon long not a 20 tall which is what phoenix was in when i got her at her adult size 
so it was very inappropriate for her. Um, so 20 long for juveniles, and for adults, something like a 40 gallon works well. Phoenix is currently in a 40 breeder, and it is perfect for her. She's doing really well in it. It's also very important that you get locks for your enclosures. Snakes are escape artists, especially corn snakes, because they do like to climb. And there are a couple different kinds of locks. I will link those in the description below. There are two that I have used and both work very, very well as long as you remember to lock them when you're all done. So I'll put the link for both of those in the description if you guys need to find some good locks for your snake enclosures and some good substrates for your enclosures. Aspen is a really popular one for corn snakes. It holds their tunnels very well. Corn snakes like to burrow. And so Aspen is great for that. It's nice and soft. It holds their burrows and it's absorbent. So if they go to the bathroom, the Aspen tends to absorb most of what comes out. So you just scoop it all up and throw it away. Other ones are Reptichip, Forest Floor from Zumed, Cypress Mulch. I don't recommend substrates like Repti Bark and Sand for corn snakes or paper towels, newspapers, flat things like that. They're good for babies. You can definitely use them for babies, but they're not really great for adults. Like I said, they like to burrow, so they will end up underneath it and just making a mess out of it. When I moved back home from college, I did have Phoenix on paper towels because I wanted to put her heat mat on. It was on paper towel for maybe two weeks. And let me tell you, it was a hot mess. It looked awful because she kept moving it around. And then because she moved it around and got underneath it when she went to the bathroom, it was actually on the tank, which meant harder cleaning because I wasn't just replacing the paper towel, wiping the tank down and calling it a day. Like it was, it was on the tank, in the corner, in the seal. It was gross. And then you're also going to want two hides. You want the warm hide over the heat mat or where your light is, the warm side of the enclosure. You want to hide over there and you want a hide on the cool side. You can by all means offer more hides, but you should really have two at least, one on each side. They also want a water bowl. I mentioned earlier, it can help with humidity, but they also like to bathe in it, drink it, and sometimes poop in it. And where are you? Phoenix a couple times has pooped in her water dish, which makes cleaning a lot easier for me. So I love it when she does that, even though her water dish is very large and heavy. You do kind of want a heavier water dish with these guys and you knock it over make a mess and that's no fun they also like to from what i found burrow underneath it phoenix spends most of her time burrowed under her water dish so i call that her cool hide water dishes you want them to be corn snake proof so if they bury underneath it you're not gonna have any spills and messes you also want to make sure that your water isn't going to be harmful. A good way to do this is to use Reptisave water conditioner. Or another thing that I like to do is I take an empty water jug, I fill it up, and I leave it sitting with the cap off for usually 24 to 48 hours. And that will take any harmful anything inside and it will just evaporate, be gone, whatever the technical term for it is and the water will be safe to use for your animals. And then you also want decorations. You know, bare enclosures are no fun. Adding fake plants is a really good way to kind of make it more enriching, more natural. And they are terrestrial mainly, but you know, they can be semi-arboreal. They do like to climb. So adding things for them to climb on is also good. She has a stick in there. I've had a couple sticks go through. I need to get her more, but we're in winter right now. So going out and finding good driftwood and sticks is a little difficult because we're under a lot of snow. But anyway, I do put sticks in there for her to climb on. She does have her hide. It's like a giant basket that she likes to curl up on top of and climb on. So. Lots of climbing opportunities is good enrichment for them and just provides them the opportunity to exhibit some natural behaviors because they do like to climb. So real quick, I'm gonna show you guys Phoenix's enclosure. So this is it. This is her warm hide. So her heat mat is under here. She's got this basket hide, which is actually like a 
gerbil, not gerbil, a guinea pig, ferret kind of hide. It was in that section of the pet store, but I really liked it. So she's got that, plus all these plants around. I have this plant back here now, so that's something new. Kind of covers the top, makes it a little darker, a little more covered. Stick to climb on, she does need more, yes I know. Um, just some more stuff to kind of cover up the glass. Her big water dish over here that she loves to soak in and hide underneath. You can see I put her back in and she went right under. So there she is down there. You can see her tail sticking out. But yeah, so I do use Aspen. This is kind of her cool hide over here because she spends all her time underneath it. And I don't have room for another hide on this side because her water is so big. But she loves that water dish. So I don't want to take it away from her. She's only had tiny little bowls her whole life, so she loves this thing. I also recommend also having thermometers. So you can see on the side, I have one of your typical little stick-on ones. And I do have up here, my handy dandy temperature gun. So that is it for my corn snake care guide. Don't forget to do your own research and never take what one person in their video says 100% like this is what I'm gonna do but this is information that I base my care off of and it has worked well for us so I am sharing it with you guys so thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more videos and we will see you next time